We need to have a grown-up conversation about where we are, how we got here, and what we intend to do about it. It's a conversation for those of us gathered here in this room today and the Conservative Party more widely. But above all, it's a conversation we need to have with the British people. And it starts with being honest with each other. That matters because the decisions we make in the coming days and weeks will set a course that will determine whether the next generation of British people inherit a stronger and more confident nation. The Conservative Party was elected with a large majority, so it falls to us to decide who carries the flag forward in this parliament. But it is not a decision that should be made behind closed doors with no input from the public. From the beginning, I wanted this campaign to be more than just a case for my leadership. I also wanted it to be a moment where the party and the country came together. Before I talk about the campaign, I want to say something about how we got here. I want to talk about Boris Johnson. As candidates to replace him, we owe it to the British people who elected Boris as Prime Minister in 2019 to explain why he is leaving office. There is something wrong about a process that sees a sitting Prime Minister replaced while the people doing the replacing pull the curtains and act like it's nobody's business but theirs. It's everybody's business. So let me tell you how I see it. Boris Johnson is one of the most remarkable people I've ever met. And whatever some commentators may say, he has a good heart. Did I disagree with him? Frequently. Is he flawed? Yes. And so are the rest of us. Was it no longer working? Yes, and that's why I resigned. But let me be clear. I will have no part in a rewriting of history that seeks to demonize Boris, exaggerate his faults, or deny his efforts. We know his achievements, breaking the Brexit deadlock, winning a stunning election victory, rolling out a world-class vaccination program, and standing up for a free Ukraine when other leaders were still wringing their hands. Some people might advise that I should avoid saying all of this in case it alienates people, but that wouldn't be honest. If telling you what I think, positive and negative, costs me the leadership, so be it. Since I declared a few short days ago, the response has been, well, overwhelming beyond my imagination. Thousands of volunteers have reached out to join our campaign. 
because they have heard a message of change. I am running a positive campaign focused on what my leadership can offer our party and our country. I will not engage in the negativity that you may have seen and read in the media. If others wish to do that, then let them. That's not who we are. We can be better. Because I look across the field of candidates and I see colleagues and friends. I see people I admire and respect, people with exceptional qualities. I want to say to all of them, we are still part of the same Conservative family. And when this election is over, we're going to work together for the British people. Yeah. But before that, we have to resolve some disagreements, incredibly important disagreements about the nature and depth of our challenges that the country faces and the right response to them. A pandemic that all but broke the world economy, a war in mainland Europe, and most visibly at home now, a global spike in inflation that has risen to levels not seen since the 70s and 80s. 